Okay, so I guess what you were explaining is the complexity, at least from my point of view, of the Canadian government and the multiple party system you have versus our system, which is two, uh, two main parties. Uh, but what about what I was uh, leading up to prior to that, which was how it just seems to me like those of us in the so-called free world, we uh, seem to take that freedom for granted. We don't seem to really appreciate what freedom we've got. Mm -hmm. And we, a lot of times we get kind of tied up in all the politics that are going on within our country. Yeah. You know, we go through political cycles or whatever. Mm -hmm. We go through, you know, voting cycles and we vote in a new bunch of Republicans or Democrats or conservatives or liberals. And we vote in a new prime minister, we vote in a new president or mm -hmm. whatever. We get so wrapped up in our own little world and uh, what what our Congress does or what your parliament does back in the, you know, the federal government or possibly even what the local state or, or government of the, uh, you know, of uh, British Columbia or whatever, we, we get sort of wrapped up in our little political world that's going on in our country. Yeah. And sometimes we don't like the laws they pass, like I didn't like Obamacare. Mm -hmm. Some people like the laws that were passed. You liked your health care system. Sure. But we don't pay attention to what's going on out there in the bigger picture. And, uh, you know, I was telling you, I'm a little pissed off when I hear what happens over there in the Middle East with these terrorist organizations. And I feel like they're a threat to our freedom. Yes. And most of my countrymen could care less. They would rather just see us come home, let those people out there terrorize whoever they're going to terrorize. They're, so, they're on the other side of the ocean. How can that possibly be a threat to us? And yet I see it as a major possible threat. Because these guys that just killed, you know, burned this Jordanian pilot alive, mm. these guys whether our politicians want to believe it or want to say it or not, these guys want to impose Sharia law on the entire world if they could. And their version of Sharia law says it's okay to burn people alive. It's okay to cut people's heads up. Huh. And that goes on in some of these countries in the Middle East where it's okay to give somebody a thousand lashes or whatever. And yet our politicians don't want to admit that. There's this political correctness that I've heard you talk about before sure. that says, oh, well, you know, we can't really criticize how these people run their government over there or how these people's religions work over there. Uh, you know, we'll make excuses for them. We'll, uh, we'll say, you know, Islam is a peaceful religion, and therefore what these guys are doing really isn't even Islam. It's just some perversion of Islam. And yet we, in the free country, we either don't want to pay attention to this, we don't want to pay attention to how this could eventually erode our freedom even mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. And this is what really gets my gall, we are actually afraid to talk about it. Mm -hmm. You and I are actually afraid to talk about it on a video like this. So you can't tell me these guys aren't terrorists when those of us in a free country are actually hesitant to even discuss this and even say to the rest of the world how we really feel about this when we hear about something like that happening. So, I just I just rambled on there. What's your take on well, all that? Well, I think that that uh, for a lot worse, we've all in the West become politically correct after the war. You can't criticize anybody about anything. You're a racist if you don't particularly like something or somebody, and it's permeated the whole Western society. I think if you go back to the beginning of the Second World War, there's something to be said for Churchill saying, this guy is a monster, we're going to have to get him and kill him. 
And they had big advertising campaigns on the radio, on newspapers, there wasn't television in those days. But there was a whole government persuasion going on telling everybody how how bad this, it could be. this was. If, and if the Nazis it was a given rule. that it could be us because we were just 22 miles away from it. Right. And so there was, it, it's still in my mind, even though I was a kid, it was in my father's mind and his, my grandfather's mind. We, this, unfortunately, the generations that have passed to now, it's everything has been watered down to become politically correct. We are the people, the, pe the generation after us are the people that have put these politicians in place. We didn't want them to be confrontational. We didn't want another war. We didn't want them to uh, take a, a, an extreme position. We neutralized Japan. We neutralized Germany. Keep them out of war. Stay out of it. Now, what the Americans did, and, and you know, UN was involved in this to some extent, was after the war there were some hot spots. <laughs> they seem to crop up every but, other year. And yeah. the, the Canadians, uh, not the British, not the Americans, the Canadians went in and became peacekeepers. This is the very beginning of seeing seeing a little bit of a kind of how eruption the, going how the on. The world was divided yeah. up and, and how things were policed after yeah. World War II. And I think the mistake that we made was that we thought everybody should be like we are. Everybody should be have the freedom, have the same and system of law and government. government. Yeah, and, and we, we, now I'm talking about the U.S. and the Allies. The greater European. All went in and tried to solve these problems. If you fast forward to Bush going into Iraq, it was crazy. You disturbed the whole cycle of them looking after themselves. They didn't have any, we didn't know this and we wouldn't have gone in. But they didn't have uh, any uh, the, the WMDs. WMDs, right? And the whole of this continent, the whole of the European theater, was aware that there was something wrong with Saddam. We made a tremendous amount of uh, positive publicity to go forward with this thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Poland. You know, what's interesting though is you brought up the WMD thing. Yeah, I could care less if they had WMDs. I'm just Joe Blow from the United States, and uh, the media portrays it like, well, the whole reason we went to that war was WMDs. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of us in the United States that could care less whether Saddam had WMDs. Oh, I agree with that. And I think, I don't think it really matters if Iran gets a hold of a nuke. What I worry about is my loss of freedom, should they take that and leverage off of it, and try to push their beliefs, their laws, yeah. their religious yeah. laws down yeah. our throat. No. Because in the United States, we're at, you know, our Constitution says you can believe whatever you want to believe, but the government won't tell you what you should believe. Yeah. The government won't impose a religion upon you. Mm -hmm. That's not the way it works over in the Middle East model. The Middle East model is, yeah. We're going to fight you, we're going to eliminate you, and you are going to swallow Sharia law hook, line, and sinker. Or you're not going to live around here. But You're but, either going to take it, and it's going to take away your freedom or whatever it does to you, or you die. That sort of mentality is the real threat that I yes. see yeah, I coming out of the Middle East. Now, does that mean that anybody that immigrates to the United States from the Middle East or from immigrates to Canada from the Middle East has that mode of thinking that they want to impose Sharia law on us? No, that's not what I'm saying. No. But there are radicals over there, obviously. It's mm -hmm. obvious. There's radicals over there that that's what they do want. They would rather the rest of the world had Sharia law. Mm -hmm. And if you want to deal with us, you better follow Sharia law.
And that isn't politically correct either. It might not be politically correct to talk about it, but it's also not politically correct in my mind to impose it on others. I think we have to talk about it. I think it's foolish to, to hide your head under a bushel and not say anything and just say, well, it'll be okay. I think one of the problems that we face in Canada, the U.S., and perhaps Britain, is that um, the general population don't like fighting. We don't like wars. We don't want to be disturbed. We want to carry on the way we have for two or three hundred years. Right. We have... We, we love... We're peace-loving. Yes. And I think most Christian... Christian populations, not, yeah. not necessarily you or I are Christian, no. but where there's a large Christian population, it's kind of like turn the other cheek approach. Yes, it is. You know, yeah. We, we want peace. We don't want war. If somebody insults us or somebody attacks us, turn the other cheek. You know, show the other person some sort of kindness. Yeah, no, and it'll be returned likewise. No, it won't. But that's not no, the no, same mentality the, when it comes no, to no, these terrorist no. groups. I, I, I think that... Um, well, obviously, because of the Iranian situation and because of uh, Iraq and because of what we left behind, we thought we were helping to convert these people to become a, more civilized, if you will. They didn't want that. They didn't really mind Saddam Hussein. They accepted him. Yeah. We made the, the mistake, I think, of of going in and saying, well, you can be like us. Well, they don't want to be like us. They don't have the same mentality. So we shook up a whole generous nest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and so we really, are, we're paying now for doing that. A lot of them, as I was saying earlier on, uh, a lot of these uh, people that are very skilled in military tactics and so on are Saddam, Saddam Hussein's military force, his elite guard, mm -hmm. that we, get, we kicked them out and said, yeah, the, the we should not have done that. Bathus, we should never bath. have done that. Yeah. So they're coming back. They have all the U.S. equipment that was left behind that, you know. Yeah, that was a big mistake. What, imagine having all that power. And, that, and know, of course, it they would have been one thing to leave a bunch of equipment in Central Command in Baghdad, mm -hmm. where their armed forces seem to be fairly solid. They ran Trump. away. They're both Sunni and Shia on their armed forces, from what I understand. But that then spread that equipment out to the rest of northern Iraq and uh, put it in the hands of soldiers that are trained by us but don't necessarily really want to fight if it comes right down to don't it. Want to fight. That was a big mistake. Yeah. And I think the other big mistake that uh, we made is pulling out too soon. You know? Yeah. Obama is using the excuse that we're pulling out because we couldn't, you know, make an agreement on uh, what the rules would be should our soldiers do something wrong or whatever. And so that's the main reason we got to pull out. And Obama didn't want to be in there in the first place, kind of like what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But uh, once we're in there, if we don't wait until the government matures, if we don't wait until the thing between the Sunni and the Shia dies down, if we don't wait until all the dust settles, and then we pull out and leave a void, a rule, the rule of law is not working properly. No, it's not. Then it turns back into chaos. That was a big mistake. Yeah. And now, out of this chaos rises ISIS. Yeah. And out of ISIS rises fear. And are we going to be afraid to talk about it? Or are we going to do something about it? And that's, that reminds me, of, what was it, President Kennedy or something? All, that, all that's required for evil to, to thrive is for good men to do nothing or something. There's a saying along something those like lines, that. Yeah. you know, and uh, that's, that comes back to my mind. It's like, if we just sit on our haunches and let you know, ISIS do what they want to do and let Al-Qaeda regroup and grow back out of the dust that was settling, you know, what's going to happen? Are, are these terrorist organizations 
going to take these countries over yes. over there. Yes, and then are. 10, 15, or 20 years later, have a hold of the nuke, and then start you know, dictating to the rest of the world, you know, we need more Sharia law all over the place. Yeah. Or, you know, or is it just something we should just blow off and no, say, let's no, not worry I, about it? No, that's you unacceptable. Know, I, I don't understand, you know, if, if we're not going to blow it off, if it is something we should worry about, why are we going to wait and wait and wait until they become stronger and stronger and stronger? Well, I, it doesn't make any sense to well, me. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, we have a head of state in the West that, that's uh, almost complacent. Obama yeah. is... That's is, what I'm saying. We're no, complacent. Yeah. We're doing so, nothing. So the only one... Uh, several things could happen to make us all come to our senses. Uh, yeah, we have, if, to get, if, we have to have another 9-11 or if, something. If an American or two or three or five are beheaded... Well, they already were. I mean, troops. No, I should have meant that. I mean... You know, yeah, I mean, the troops are over there as advisors and the Canadians there as advisors. some innocents beheaded, I know that much. <laughs> now, the people of, you and I as citizens of these different two countries have to get behind and say, come on, let's, there is no protesting. There is no, they're worried about the price of oil, they're worried about food stamps, they're worried about not having jobs or whatever, everything except this. Yeah. You see it on the news. You know world. what's interesting though, that the, the King of Jordan is pissed yeah. off. I'm pissed off the King of Jordan is pissed it's off. It's about time. And I, I want to see what he does. I hope he says, okay, I've had enough. I'm not just going to fly a couple of planes over there to take ISIS out. I'm going to get involved to the hill. The King of yeah. Jordan was educated in England. He's very pro-British. The Brits have supported him with armaments. Well, he's part of NATO, or he's, he's at least an ally, right? Yeah, and he'll get 150% support from the UK and, and the US. Yeah. So and, I am sure that... Obama, be, it's probably music to Obama's ears. It's probably music to our Congress's ears. Yeah. Finally, somebody is going to maybe step up and do some of the dirty work. Well, couldn't... You know, and we and we can just sit back and we won't have to do any more of the dirty work. We'll just let Jordan do the dirty work. They aren't you know. big enough to do it on their own or even No, they're the not. Eyes. That's what I'm saying. No. You know, let's rally the forces. Let's get everybody well, why don't why doesn't why doesn't France get with a program? Oh. Britain get with a program. Let's sure. get with Britain. the program. Britain's got That's my message. Let's the, get with the program. The same countries you talk about have got Air Force is involved, but they haven't got ground troops involved. Now, what the devil is going to yeah, get us involved? We're it's, afraid some guys are going to get hurt. Well, you know, I don't want to see our soldiers get no, hurt anymore no, either. either but no. To me, you might get hurt in a little bit in the short run, long but term, if you wait longer, your level will get hurt even worse. Big, big problems. You know, so yeah. what, what's that commercial, you know? You can pay me now or you can pay me later. <laughs> <laughs> you know?